A call to remember. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our worship service on this Memorial Day weekend here at the Clark's Grove CP Church in Maryville, Tennessee. Hope you're having a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. It is a weekend when we're asked ourselves to remember the men and women who served in our military who gave up the ultimate sacrifice, their life, and serving their country, fighting for the freedoms that we all enjoy or are enjoying this weekend. You know, I've always had a wonderful appreciation for for the men and women that serve in our military, a uh, heartfelt thankfulness for that. Uh, it's it's always been uh, one of the passions of mine, and and I came myself within a, just an eyelash of, uh, of of joining the chaplaincy program in the Navy when I was there in seminary. I talked to several people and prayed about it, and even though it's something I wanted to do, uh, I just didn't feel that it's something God wanted me to do. But I do have that healthy appreciation. You know, I've seen. The pictures I've seen, uh, the video clips of people that have served in the military and served in wars, and 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 yet I just does I just don't have that that um, fully understand what it, what people have gone through that have served in the military and what their families have gone to. Uh, I mean, if you haven't been there and done that, then it's really hard to to understand. You can appreciate their service, but you just really can't fully fully fathom what they'd gone through and. Uh, uh, but I was I had an opportunity one time to to get a a window into the soul of someone who who did serve or was a part of that where her husband had served. I was serving a church as a, as associate pastor of, 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 of youth and ministry and outreach, and uh, one of the responsibilities was when people would uh, come and visit and fill out the card, and we'd make contact with and actually go visit and talk to them. And, uh, one one lady filled out the card and you know I called and talked to her and said would love to come by. And she said, oh please come by. And she so gracious and so wonderful, one of the most beautiful, wonderful women that I'd ever had the opportunity to 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 know. And I was in her home. Her name is Miss Virginia Sellers. And I was in her home and was talking and she was you know wanting to serve. And I was looking around and I noticed something that was hanging up on her wall. And I went over there and I looked and I, I just I was just astonished. I said, the there was an original newspaper clipping of the bombing of Pearl Harbor, and in this framework of where the clippings were, there were these uh, shard pieces of of metal. And I said, Miss Sellers, what what is this? And she said, Well, come here and I'll tell you. And she sat down and told me that her husband and her were stationed in Hawaii when Pearl Harbor hit and they were getting ready to have breakfast that morning when the bombing started and the sirens started going off and and she said it was very frightening and and, and her husband was rallying trying to get you know his stuff together and his uniform together and she was she was like I just didn't know what to do I was just like I'm just gonna make some coffee I guess I don't know and and she said her husband came up to her and and told her that he had to go and he ran out the door towards the bombing that was going on because he was worried about his fellow his, his fellow mates and she said that was the last time that she saw her husband he didn't make it and through her experience and through her emotion i was able to feel for, for a little bit what it must have been like to be a part of something like that you know, and her willingness to tell that story brought me into that moment, a moment I would have never been, you know, been able to even think about. But it was it was absolutely amazing to hear that story. And with tears in her eyes, and she gladly would tell it. And I appreciate you getting that vent. And every time that any time Memorial Day comes up, especially when we celebrate Pearl Harbor, I think about Miss Virginia and the sacrifice that her husband made, the sacrifice that she made that day. She still loved her country, still loved her God to the, to the very end of her life. And I know that she's, <laughs> she's in glory right now with her husband again. And, uh, but we're called to remember men and women that serve. Let that be a reminder that we're called to remember the battle that we find ourselves in daily. The battle between 
good and evil. I'd like to go back to the Old Testament, to the book of Exodus in the 12th chapter, and it's when the first Passover took place. We find the Israelites are slaves in Egypt, and we see Moses and Aaron that has been uh, debating with, with Pharaoh and coming through the plagues and trying to get the people to let go. And the final plague came from Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's mouth that it was going to be the death of the firstborn. And Moses got instructions of God to tell them what the Israelites were supposed to do on that deadly night. And I pick it up on the 12th chapter, the, 20, the 21st verse, and this is what it says. Then Moses summoned to the elders of Israel and said to them, Go at once and select the animals for your family and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it into the blood in the basin, and put some of the blood on the top sides of the door frame. Not one of you shall go out the door of this house until morning. And when the Lord goes through the land and strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the top sides of the door frame. And he will pass over the doorway, and he will not permit the destroyer to enter your house and to strike you down. Obey these instructions as a lasting ordinance for you and your descendants. And when you enter the land that the Lord your God has promised you, he says, I want you to observe this ceremony. And here's, 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 the great, here's the great line in this scripture. And when your children ask you, what does this ceremony mean to you? Then tell them, it's the Passover sacrifice to the Lord who passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt and spared our homes when he struck down the Egyptians. And then the people bowed down and worship, and the Israelites did what the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron to do. They were instructed to, to have a moment of remembrance to celebrate the Passover to, as a reminder of what God had done. And when your children ask this, then you are to tell them what the Lord has done and how he delivered them. Because you know what? The children weren't there, right? Future generations weren't there when 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 the, the angel of death came and it struck down the Egyptians and it didn't harm the Israelites. They weren't there. They, the only, only thing that they got is is, is the stories that the parents and the grandparents could tell them. And with that same kind of passion and that same kind of vigor in their heart of what they saw and what they experienced, they were able to then share it with their children and pass that down from generation to generation to generation. It is a call of remembrance. And, and folks, God is always asking us to do the very same thing, is to remember uh, to remember the times that he has delivered us and saved us and to be able to share those stories. Uh, particularly, God asks us to remember him and what he has done in great times of distress, that when we find ourselves in distress. I want to share with you in Psalms of uh, the 77th Psalm. This psalmist is, is, is giving his testimony of a time when he was feeling great anxiety in his life and he wasn't able to sleep. This was one of those sleepless nights. You know, those nights that we have when we've got some a burden upon us on our heart or our family or some, whatever we're concerned about. And we toss and turn because we can't get it out of our mind. The psalmist was experiencing one of these nights. Listen, Psalm, the 77th Psalm, starting with verse 1. He said, I cried out to God for help. I cried out for God to hear me. Man, have we not been there before? I know I've been there before on some nights like this. And when I was in distress, I sought the Lord at night. I stretched out my untying hands and my soul refused to be comforted. Therefore, he was saying, I'm not getting any relief here, God. I'm crying out to you and I'm concerned about what's going on in my life, but I just don't feel any relief right now. He goes on to say, I remembered you, oh God. And I groaned. I mused and my spirit grew faint. You kept my eyes from closing. I was troubled to speak. I thought about the former days, the years long ago, and I remembered my songs in the night. My heart mused and my spirit inquired. What was he inquiring about? Well, he goes on in verse 7. Will the Lord, rejo will the Lord reject me forever? Will he never show his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed me for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in his anger withheld his compassion? 
you know, there's times we feel this way. There's times people feel this way. I'm telling you, there's people out there right now that's feeling this way. Especially in this times, these crazy times we find ourselves in with this pandemic. People are stressed beyond stress. But this is what the psalm says. That in all this time that he's wrestling and struggling at night, he can't close his eyes, he can't sleep, he's wondering where God is. And he says this, verse 10. Then I thought, to this I will appeal. The years of the right hand of the Most High. And the psalmist says, I'll remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. And I will meditate on your works and consider all your mighty deeds. He said, I'll remember back when God has delivered me, when God has been there for me. I might not have seen it then, but I see it now. And then he goes on to say, your ways, O God, are holy. Are holy. What God is so great as our God? There is another. You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the people. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. Wow. Psalmist is remembering a time when he was in great distress and he felt like he was alone and even God wasn't there. But then, yes, he testifies to us that he's going to hold on to the glorious works of God and to his miraculous deeds. And that's what's going to carry him through. And that's what carries him through. See, we're in this battle. We're in a war. We are. It's been going on for the beginning of time and it's still carrying on right now. We're in the war between good and evil. And in that war, we have, we have Christ as our field general. We have the word of God here as our battle plan. But there's another element that we have that I think we forget to use more than anything. And that's our voice. Christians need to be telling their stories. Christians need to be giving their testimony about God. Listen, your story is unique. And you go, oh, pastor, I, I grew up in the church and, you know, I, I learned about Jesus in Sunday school. I had great Sunday school teachers, I had great parents that taught. And we prayed, you know, at, at, in our homes. And I just naturally came to know Jesus and accept him as my Lord and Savior. Yes, that's your story. And that's your story to tell. Don't think that it's, that, it, that it's just so general of a story that it doesn't affect someone's life. They can, you could be talking to somebody who did not have a family like that, who did not grow in the church, and they hear that story and they go, whoa, whoa, there's somebody that lived a different life. There's somebody that was bathed in the gospel through their entire life and were able to grow up and accept Jesus and be saved, eternally saved. I mean, you don't, I, I mean, people have some great stories out there, some great testimonies where they've had some horrible lives and they lived horrible things and they were arrested and they were addicted to drugs and they did some horrible things. And, and along the way, they did find Jesus Christ through other people and other counselors. And now they've been clean and, 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 and they, they just honor and love Jesus. I've talked to those people. I've celebrated with those people. I've cried with those people. And I love those people because, because they were once this way and God intervened in their lives and Christ changed them and turned them into a new person and they became a new person. Listen, people need to hear your stories. People love stories. But they need to hear more of Christians testifying about what has God has done. And you know what? Be honest. I've not lived a perfect life. I've made countless mistakes and still make mistakes. I've not always done it the right way. And when I talk to people at work, and especially when I talk to young people, I tell them, man, I've, I've messed up more than you can mess up. But God has delivered me. And God has changed me. And God continues to change me. That's the stories you tell. I, I, God's given me a great opportunity. I work for a Christian company and, and we're allowed to share our faith. And I talk to people. We have people coming in all the time and different tents and stuff. And, and I'm, I'm not shy. I, I, I love to tell them the stories. And the look on their eyes is, is, is and the countenance on their faith is amazing, especially, especially when I get some young people in there and they, they look at me and they say, is that real? And I said, yeah, that's real. God is real. God has worked miracles in my life. God has worked miracles in other people's lives. I've seen it. Let me tell you what I've seen. 
Matter of fact, scripture says that we should do that very thing. Mark 19, Jesus says, go home to your family and tell them everything the Lord has done for you, how merciful he has been. Psalms 22, 22 says, I'll praise you to all my brothers. I will stand up before the congregation and testify of the wonderful things you have done. God tells us, go tell your story to people and don't think that you don't have a story to tell because you do. Because if you were lost and now you're saved, you have a story to tell. If you are eternally damned and now you're eternally going to live forever, you have a story to tell. And let me tell you something about your story and why it's different. It glorifies God. See, we glorify a lot of things. You know, we glorify people that build in great mass wealth and we think, wow, that's amazing. We glorify athletes. Oh, Lord have mercy how we glorify athletes. Some people even glorify actors. Why do you want to do that? I do not know, but some people do. But you know what happens when we glorify those types of people? They will fail us every single time because they are human and they are sinners and they will make mistakes and they'll have transgressions. And then we'll be just like, I just can't believe that, 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 that they did. Did that but let me tell you something what's unique about your story is that your story glorifies God Almighty because in your story and your testifying you're talking about something that you couldn't do on yourself that is save yourself that you had a holy intervention through the Holy Spirit came upon you and convicted you and through your conviction you accepted Jesus Christ and you were once a lost person and now you're a fine person you were once a bad person now you're a good person you're once filled with transgressions and now you're Transgressions are gone. Hallelujah. That glorifies God. Folks, we're in a battle. We have our field general that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have a battle plan, which is the Bible that we need to be reading constantly and understanding how to fight this battle. And the third great weapon God has given us is our voice. And we, we love to tell stories. Especially if it's gossip. Mm, man, we... Did you, did you hear what happened over there in that office building? Let me tell you what I heard. Yeah, we love to tell those stories. We love to say, oh man, did you see that game? What a game. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that comeback. The one thing I just don't hear regularly around the water, water cooler, as they say, we come in every Monday and we say, hey, how was your weekend? It was a great weekend. Had some fun. Went to the mountains. We did some stuff. Not one time have I heard anybody say, how was your weekend? Oh, my gosh. You wouldn't believe church was awesome. Church was awesome. The message was good. The music was good. <laughs> why are we so hesitant? I, I kind of know why we're hesitant because we've been trained to be quiet. Because that's what the enemy wants, to be quiet. Listen, we got to share our remembrances. We got to share our stories, the good and the bad. Yeah, we got scars. We also been glorified and glorified God in telling it. If you got a story to tell, then tell it. Tell it in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Amen.